can you just uh, obviously you have uh, a change at, at punting here can you uh, walk us through Chris's injury and, and uh, the decision you made on, on what you're going to be doing with uh, the pun with the punter you have now yeah Chris is he's a he's a tough guy and we told everybody that Chris isn't a punter he's a football player so he's been dealing with just some of that pain for a while and really Washington game at about halftime it was a little bit colder and rainy and he went out there to just warm up at halftime and that's actually when he kind of really felt it and this past game he really struggled with the pain and his performance I think has been fine but it was just hurting him I mean Monday through Saturday it was tough for him so he ended up getting it done and we brought in a new guy a little over a week ago I think and new guys got to get it done What did you like about him? Why, why did you choose him to come in? He, he punted in the XFL this past spring, so he had some live ball experience, you know, handling snaps and operation time in the pocket. Um, he's a big kid. He's an athletic kid. He can run. He can throw. He can punt right-footed. He can punt left-footed. We think he'll do a, a fine job holding, you know, for field goals, which is a huge part of a punter's job. Um, and one of our scouts really liked him, uh, Henry Sloka, when he'd seen him at some previous kind of camps that, um, that Hunter has been at. So a lot of things to like about him, and he seems like a real poised kid, and I think he's going to do just fine. John, can you walk us through the philosophy behind the 59-yard field goal right before halftime for, and the trajectory of it? Yeah, that was, that was really probably one of the greatest kicks I've ever witnessed. Not, you know, and the 59 yarder is obviously a challenge, but with the conditions, I don't know what it was like on TV or what the announcers were saying, but on the field, it was so windy and so swirly, we could never get a feel on the, really the direction of the wind. And the American flag up in the top left corner was really a false read on the wind direction. So um, it was a tough one. And, you know, at the end of the half, end of the game, you kick it. If it was normal course of the game, you probably don't take the chance on a, on a miss in the field position. But we figured, you know, Greg's got the range, even though it was into the wind. We didn't know if the wind was really left or right. But we told him, just drive that sucker low, field goal pro. You guys got to lock down because this ball is going to come out a little bit low. And he just punched it right through the wind and snuck it in the corner pocket. <laughs> it was fun to witness because, man, that was... That was probably a top three kick I've ever witnessed as far as, you know, degree of difficulty. How much do you all practice the specifics of that, or what do you practice to be ready for a moment like that? The, the field goal you're talking about? Yeah. yeah. Um, gosh, I mean, we've had some windy practices outside, and when we get our field goal reps as a group on Thursday, we'll back Greg up into the high 50 range. You know, but it's a whole different deal when it's, you know, it's an, it's an opponent, it's in a stadium that's swirly and windy, um, you know, night game, no fans, the depth perception is different. It's really hard to simulate that kick in practice other than the distance and a little bit of wind, but it was, um, it was phenomenal. It was awesome. You know, too bad, you know, we didn't win the football game because we really felt going in, taking the lead right there at the end of the half. That's just a huge, you know, nice burst of momentum. And, you know, we felt like we had, you know, we got this game, we got to finish and, you know, it didn't go that way, but it was a great kick. Mike, are you there? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Um, John, can you walk us through the uh, intentional safety there and, and just the sequence at all? Yeah, that was, um, that was an interesting one, kind of just par for the course this year. So we, it was fourth down and long. I, I can't remember if it was 15, fourth and 20, something like that, for just a little over four minutes left. And we just couldn't punt him the football back because that was basically waving the white flag, and we didn't want to do that. So it was a 12-point game. So it was a you know, pretty quick, fairly simple decision to take the safety because no matter what we were going to do, we had to try to get the ball back. A fake punt wasn't going to work at that down and distance. Punting it to him is not going to get the ball back. So we figured we'll you know, just add two to the, to the deficit to make it 14, which really wasn't any difference. And we knew we had you know, that kick in our bag. After the safety, which is basically a different version of an onside kick, 
where you can actually punt the ball out of your hand instead of having the ball have to hit the ground first like a regular kickoff. So um, we just call it a moon ball, literally. We just called it, okay, let's go kickoff team up. We're hitting the moon ball, basically punt after a safety. And we told our guys that the ball is likely most, most likely going to hit the ground because it's a really hard catch, especially with all the traffic surrounding any potential catcher. And we just got to find a way to come up with it. Um, and our, really our goal is for Greg to hit it about 25 yards past the yard line we're kicking it from. And he nailed it. He hit, I think it bounced on about the 45 yard line right into the cavity of the hands team. And we just got to get that football, man, because we, we had two guys high pointing and we felt like we had it in the pile, but you know, the ref thought differently. So um, the philosophy basically, long story short, was we couldn't punt him the football Taking the safety wasn't really going to cost us anything, you know, from a 12 to a 14 point game. And our best chance of getting the football back was to hit the moon ball. So we tried it and uh, we really thought it was going to work, but, but it didn't. What's the communication level like? I'm curious on that whole sequence of knowing, you know, what, 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 is it your decision or is it communicated to you that, hey, if it's forked down here and we're backed up, we're going to go for the intentional safety? Um, how much how much heads up do you have that that's coming? Um, if, 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 is it your call to do so or your suggestion? Um, you know, can, can you walk me through that part of it? Yeah, the, that's a, it's a great question, and maybe from a fan's perspective, it's pretty fascinating. There's really the amount of time you have to make these decisions is really what's left on the play clock. Because on third down, we're really thinking four down territory for the offense. But once we got backed up, I think we took a sack right there on. Third or you know third down, so it backed us up into the fourth and twenty range. So you know just making a real quick decision, we put the punt team out there. We took the delay game because I believe maybe there's an incomplete pass on that third down. We took the sack on the second down. You'll have to remind remind me of that one. Um, but we took the delay game just to decide if we wanted to really go for it, the offense on fourth down or take the intentional safety. So. The, the game clock had already stopped, so taking the delay game didn't mean anything. And we had made the decision to take the safety. So backing us five yards up just helps us snap it out of the end zone. But really, um, me and myself and Coach McCarthy just talked about it real quick. And we just made a decision. We told the gunner to go tell LP just to snap it out of the end zone, take the intentional safety, knowing that the following play was going to be our moon ball punt after a safety onside kick. Um... So that was a sequence of events that we were, we were prepared for and knew was about to happen once we decided to take the intentional safety. Um, but there's always a lot of options, and we just have to make quick decisions basically on the amount of time that there is on the play clock. So that's kind of how it happened. The, the communication was simple and quick. We re relayed it to the punt team, and um, we had to load up you know, our moon ball team real fast too, which is a whole new kind of personnel group. So there's a lot of stuff happening, a lot of scrambling and um, credit to the players, just kind of being in tune with all the potential situations right there and giving us a chance. Uh, John, I'd like to go back to your new uh, hunter for just a moment. You mentioned the holding responsibilities and that he can do it. Has he ever actually done it in a game, to your knowledge? Yeah, he has done it. You know, he was a holder and punter at Northwestern University. Um, he did it in the XFL. And he was also, in the XFL, their third-string emergency quarterback. So just knowing any kid that can throw the football and punt the football left-footed, there's some ball skill aspect to him where um, you feel really good about his ability to hold. You know, because holding is hand-eye coordination and getting the ball down fast. And we've worked just as much, if not more, on holding this week than we have on his punting. Um, so he's, he's been really good. He's really a, an athletic guy that, um, you know, he could, he'd probably be great at ping pong, golf, croquet, tennis, swimming. He's one of those guys that just, you know, can probably just kind of pick up anything real fast. Um, kind of like Chris. Chris is kind of the same way. So... We shouldn't have any problems, hopefully, with our ability to hold the football on PATs and field goals. Looking ahead in practices, will you have him punt with a different feed? I know Chris Jones was here for so long. I know Basaccia would have Jeff Heath punt right-footed in practice so that 
the returners could get used to um, the spin of the ball because they were used to it coming off of a left foot. Yeah, and that depends on, for our punt returners, on the opponent punter. So when we've played lefties, they've caught Chris Jones all week. And the great thing about here in Dallas, we have a jugs machine that can spit out right-footed punts. You just twist it real quick and it can change it to left-footed punts. And then you can twist it again real quick and make it kick off rotation balls. Um, so we're pretty lucky to have that machine that can give us all of them. Um, so our returners, whatever we're playing against, that's the, that's the punt we catch because yes, it does spin a different way, you know, based on the foot of the punter. And this week we got a righty, so we've been getting a lot of good live ball work off of Hunter's punts for our punt returners because it's kind of the same ball. And last question, I promise. Could you no. please help us with it, with the pronunciation of his last name, Niswander, Niswander? I think it's Nicewander. Like a like a Nicewander. Okay. Yeah. Like nice, nice guy. Okay. Nice guy. guy. Yeah. I, I think so. <laughs> That's what I've been calling him at least. You know, people call me. Thank you. People call me fossil fast, so it's, that's what I'm going with. Nice wander. Calvin. Uh, just, uh, uh, just to be clear, in the game, he's gonna punt righty or lefty. Ah. Uh, I guess we'll see. <laughs> I guess we'll see. <laughs> that's a good answer. Have you ever had a situation like that where you have a punter that can go either way and? That obviously might impact some things for the return team. Exactly. You took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> You're on to me. Thanks, John. Thanks.